Welcome to Reporters and to our continuing series on borders across the globe. In this edition, we're taking you to the dividing line between China and Laos. It runs only about 500 kilometers long, and it is booming like never before. As China seeks to dominate world trade with its Belt and Road Initiative, transportation lines and whole cities are springing up between the two countries. A report by Adri Berger, Dara Pathamavong, with Séverine Bardon and Olivier Marzin. December 2021. In its brand new station in capital Vientiane, Laos is inaugurating its first major train line. It's an important day for Laos. This new and modern means of transport will allow our country to develop even further. It's a dream come true. Due to COVID regulations, the Laotian president can only address his Chinese counterpart virtually. And on this occasion, I would like to express my gratitude to President Xi Jinping and the Chinese government for their invaluable assistance. This 420-kilometer-long high-speed line was built and 70% financed by China as part of their New Silk Road project. Passengers on the inaugural journey of the Laos-China Railway are invited to board. Prepare for departure. The train takes three hours to reach the border from Vientiane. From there, the railway connects with the Chinese network. For Laos, the only country in Southeast Asia without a coastline, it's the promise of opening up to the world and of a new economic boom. There's a place where that promise already has a taste of reality. Boten, the border town on the Laos side. I came to pick up a car from China. For the moment, it's in a warehouse here in Boten. I will check it and bring it back to Vian Chan. Boten has developed a lot. Logistics companies are doing really well here. On the border between China and Laos, the Boten Special Economic Zone is coming into being. This $10 billion project began in 2016 and is entirely developed by a Chinese company on Laotian land. By 2035, the brand new city is expected to be home to around 300,000 people. It's very comfortable to wear, perfect for the Lao New Year. Noi is originally from Vientiane, the capital of Laos. She moved to Boten with her children to be closer to her Chinese husband and to take advantage of the business opportunities in the border town. There is a lot of interest in this product at the moment. For the past three years, she's been running a small neighborhood bazaar selling low-cost products. These shoes come from China. These ones come from Vietnam. Most of the shoes come from these two countries. Clothes, cosmetics, everyday trinkets. In Noi's shop, most of the products are imported. And the prices are more often given in Chinese yuan than in Laos kips, a way of adapting to the local clientele. Most people who live in Boten are not from here. They come from other regions and from China. They came to settle here just after the city was built. They rented houses and commercial properties. Boten has a distinctive history. 
In the 2000s, this small village on the edge of Laos transformed into a casino town, popular with Chinese visitors. But in 2011, China shut down all gambling establishments. Boaten shrank back into a sleepy bywater until its latest rebirth as a special economic zone. Here in 2015, 2016, there wasn't anything, just fields and a little square. Now there are buildings everywhere. The town currently hosts 2,000 residents, 80% of them Chinese. Stephen Zhu is a pioneer. He moved to Boton early and was a witness to its spectacular development. In the factory he built seven years ago, almost half of his employees are Chinese. And you haven't filled that one out yet, that's right? No, we still have to wait 20 minutes. But this Chinese entrepreneur moving to Boton was a well-considered decision. It was also a bet on the future. In 2005, I built a tobacco flavoring factory in Zimbabwe. Then in 2015, China launched the Silk Road project. And I thought Laos could be a good opportunity for me. So I moved my factory from Africa to Laos. I chose Boton because most of my customers are in China, and Boton is a special economic zone on the border of Laos and China. There is also an industrial development assistance program. In Boton, setting up a business is relatively simple. The administrative procedures can be completed in a fortnight, Many products are tax-free, and the tax system is advantageous. In three years, a hundred or so companies have set up stall in this city still under construction. Due to COVID, the development of Boton has slowed down. But I am convinced that as soon as the pandemic is over, Boton will develop again very quickly. There will be an economic boom in this city. The strict lockdown policies on both the Lao and Chinese sides have hit Boton hard. Most of the Chinese people in the town returned to their country before the border was closed. Oh, Wan. oh thanks, Wan. That's great. There's only the two of us to carry the beer. Noi says she never thought of leaving Boton. Even slowed down by the pandemic, the city offers her opportunities that she would not find anywhere else in Laos. I make a few deliveries. We do that every day or so. It's not much, but it's not that bad, given the current economic situation. Yesterday, we delivered a little bit of beer, only a few crates. She's only been here for three years, but she's already opened a second business selling and delivering drinks. Whoa, it's too heavy. You can only take one like this. She currently employs five people and plans to expand further. If the borders reopen, I will get more work. It's true. I will also be able to sell and deliver clothes. In fact, I will have so much work that I won't be able to do it by myself. And I will have to think about hiring more people. Even if the two communities don't mix much, Chinese and Laotians in Boton share the same optimism. Only their means and ambitions differ. Hello, sir. It's been a while. How are you? Welcome. Take a seat. In a brand new tea room, Stephen Zhou is meeting a fellow compatriot. 
It's an opportunity for the two men to talk about business and future prospects. How is business going this year? We started production the day before yesterday. It'll be ready next month. The orders were a bit bigger last year, but this year there's obviously been the COVID impact. If you have a long-term business plan, COVID isn't that important. If you have long-term goals, in fact, it's actually a good thing. It weeds out the less competitive businesses. For example, buying this hotel, if this were normal times, how much would it have cost me? Yes, that's true. Despite, or perhaps thanks to COVID, Mr. Xiong has just purchased a hotel and several other buildings. He plans to open a trilingual international school by taking advantage of Botan's location. So you're optimistic about Botan's future overall? Within the framework of the New Silk Road, China has invested hundreds of billions in Southeast Asia, and especially in Laos, with the railway, the highway. In the future, China's investments in Southeast Asia will necessarily be centered on Laos. In Laos, like elsewhere, there are those who rail against the country's dependence on China, complaints that Beijing is stepping too far into its small neighbor. But Botan's pioneers are far from these political considerations. People like Noi and her sister, who has arrived to join her in the town, just hope to build a better future for themselves. In Botan, my dream is to buy a car and a plot of land. It won't take too long, you'll see. When I came here, I had nothing. But now I have a car, a house, a piece of land, and I can support my children. It just takes a little time and patience. When we lived in Vientiane, we had nothing either. And when I saw the success you had here, I decided to come too. Do you think I'll be as successful as you? Of course you will. Thanks to the train and new highways recently opened between Laos and China, Botan has transformed into a communication hub. When a border becomes a link, it can also become a land of opportunities. And that does it for this edition of Reporters. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more world news here on France 24.